I finally did it. I can make successful exposures with the PCB motor. So to recap, I have a laser which is projected through a rotating prism, which results in a line. And then by moving that line over a substrate, you can expose a pattern. It's hard to see the laser bundle in reality by a camera. So that's why I rendered the technology here. And you can see that you have a laser bundle which goes through a rotating prism, which results in a moving dot on a sheet of paper. And if it goes fast, you actually see a line. And then by moving that line over a substrate, uh, you can expose it better. And here you see also the laser bundle rendered, which hits a photodiode during the rotation. So you have a very accurate trigger. Using a prism for laser direct imaging provides several advantages. You have a 90 degrees angle of incidence over your field of view. And the prism does not have curved substrates so it's easy to make. Now this was the original module I used and that worked very well, but um, the BLDC motor, which you see here, is still, still takes quite a lot of space. So I thought I could further improve upon this if I would integrate the motor into the printed circuit board. And that's what you see here. So here the coils are integrated into this, this sheet and basically the only thing you need to do is you have to place your prism on top of that. Here you see an exposure with the module with the BLDC motor. Yeah? And you see that a stable line is formed of about one centimeter wide on top of the substrate, which is a printed circuit board. So if you place that circuit board into an action solutions and do several steps, you end up with copper tracks. The result of the exposure you can view on my Hackaday page. Lanes are about one centimeter wide and you can see some unevenness between lanes. But still the copper tracks stitch. And the resolution here was better than 100 micrometers. Developing a PCB motor took a long time. First I had to get something spinning and this is one of the earliest setups I made. Then I did a lot of trials with magnets and uh, hull sensors. I tried to optimize the algorithm, tried different ways of positioning the prism and uh, changed the current going through the system. And this is one of the later videos where you see I can actually really uh, spin the system at higher speeds. Now, once I had done this, I had to stabilize the speed. So in this video, I will turn it on the system, the prism spins up. And then once the speed is stabilized, I turn on the laser. And I think we'll wait for it. So I turn on the laser and you see that the prism is kept in a certain position. And I know that the system is working now. You can see if I flip the system, uh, problem is, is that the prism simply falls off. But then I had the idea of adding a ferrite sheet. And ferrite is attracted to magnets or magnets are attracted to ferrite, but ferrite is not conducting. So we don't have the problem of eddy currents. Now, if I add the ferrite at the back end of my printed circuit board, then the magnets will be attracted to this ferrite. And then I should be able to also rotate it and here you see I can also rotate the system while it's flipped 180 degrees. Huh? So here an experiment at high speeds and you see that it still works. So the ferrite idea was quite good. So it was time to go next level. I milled out a new mounting for my prism with a CNC mill. Uh, and you can also see a small magnet which is placed on top of the prism, but that is just to clip out uh, the laser bundle which goes over it. Um, and here you see that there are eight magnets in this enclosure. And this enclosure has to be quite accurate because otherwise you would also have an orthogonal movement uh, with respect to your laser line uh, if it rotates and, and you have a sort of uh, movement going on. So here you see the, the final test. Uh, which you also saw, saw at the start of this video. 
So I mounted the system on top of a stage. Uh, I have the ferro sheet at the back. Uh, I have my prism uh, on top of a PCB motor, and you see a projection. So the complete pattern consists out of 13 uh, lanes, and each lane there are 10,000 lines. So it gives us a bit of an estimate of, is this working? And yes, it is working. Here we see the results. The left image was made with a BLDC motor and a prism three years ago. The right image was made with the printed circuit board motor and a prism. You see that the contrast is better on the left. Uh, I think the, uh, the paper degraded over time and actually it's, it's being used over the due date. Uh, what I also still see is that um, but I have a, quite a lot of noise in the speed of my prism motor. Uh, I don't use a snubber circuit, so when I when I turn off and on the the electric current to the printed circuit board motor, I don't account for back EMF, um, and then the hall sensors can still be positioned better. Uh, so so that will be done in a next uh, step. But but I hope to to really finalize this technology and and bring a kit uh, so that other people can also contribute to this technology.